So and welcome to another episode of Rebel City Podcast. This week's guest, we had um, the guys from Men Matter. Um, Men Matter are a Glasgow-based men's anxiety group, um, like a collective, I suppose. Um, and we had the guys in just really talking about like men's mental health. I think we we get into like a really good conversation. Um, just about the subject in general. Um, we spoke about like the sort of influx of men's anxiety groups. Um, the guys were telling us about like the other activities that they do within their group and um, how just like coming together as men is just really important. Um, we, I mean, we always talk on the podcast about how like back in the day that would have been the pub, but I think that we sort of discuss how that isn't really like that productive going to the pub and getting steaming just to sort of meet up with your mates and the um these groups that we're seeing popping up which are incredible and the guys that run them all like hats off to them these are just ways for men to just come together share their experiences and just let each other know that we're not like alone um actually like we had a wee sort of moment where uh, the guys schooled me on like sort of happiness and joy, which I love stuff like that. Like I know that I go on about how I've studied to become a mental health professional, but see when I just get that sort of way where I think I know what I'm talking about here and somebody just surprises me by um, really schooling me. I love it like, uh, and I love the sort of reframe that the guys told me. Um, about the ways to frame happiness and joy and what we can get contentness um and contentment from like our daily lives um i don't really want to ruin the podcast it's just it was a cracking chat between the four years that were in the room just about men's mental health and i think that these conversations are just vitally important so if you do listen and you enjoy it or you, you agree with me that you think that men's mental health and men sharing um their experiences really Martyrs and um, do you get that there? Men martyrs, a wee pun. Um, but it, that it's important that we do this. Then please share the podcast. Um, these episodes are not for everybody. Sitting listening to people talk about sort of mental health and poor mental health. So, um, understand that. And um, but if you do like listen and like and or think that this is an important subject, then please give it a share. Um, and we appreciate every share, but without further ado, here's the episode. I made a promise. That wasn't a round of applause, by the way. <laughs> So and welcome to another episode of Rebel City Podcast. As always, get Matt. All right, dude. Matt. Ah, no bad, mate. Um, nice haircut, mate. Oh, I know. It was it was it was long <laughs> overdue. I, I was out in uh, well, we were out in Edinburgh uh, last week filming, um, and I it was like walking about in a fucking oven where I really hard. So, it was. <laughs> so the next day, I just got the whole fucking lot off, man. It was brilliant. I love it. <laughs> You're looking good, mate. Um, so this week's guests were really privileged to have the guys from Men Matter Scotland. Um, how's it going, guys? Good, mate. Eh? Thanks very well. much. Eh? Sunday morning. Cheers for coming in. It's this is like we're always doing mornings, aren't we? Because of work. Aye. <laughs> you're kind of asking people, do you, do you want to come down the West End at nine in the morning <laughs> and, and a Wednesday? And all, like, <laughs> and the parking, the parking. Nah, yeah. I know, <laughs> man. Levy. I know, man. I know. It's a nightmare. It's I'm going to need to fucking get like, one of the like bottles. Aye, <laughs> yeah, I was going to say that. I will pay for people's parking when they're in. Oh, pure nightmare, man. So, do you want to just tell us a wee bit about? What the organisation is and like, what you do. Aye. And who you uh, are. So, <laughs> uh, so first, I'm Peter uh, from Men Matter Scotland. I'm one of the trustees. To uh, sum it up, Men Matter Scotland is a peer support network for men who are suffering from mental health issues, negative mental health issues, uh, social isolation, or just having a shite time now. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, and we are here to support them. And we have also get support from ourselves there. Absolutely. Uh, aye. Yeah, that's it. So my name's Gregor and I'm also a trustee of Men Matter Scotland. So and I would I would add to that, um we have we have sessions where guys can come and talk and be listened to, mm-hmm. give support and get support. But we also do activities where 
that supports good mental health, like physical exercise, meeting new people, getting back to the community mm -hmm. uh, and getting fitter and engaging with people. So that sort of sums up yeah. what we do throughout the week. Mm -hmm. Sounds pretty holistic. It is. It really, really is. And I think that's why it's working. It's, it's, we're no medically trained, we're no psychiatrists or therapists, mm -hmm. we're just guys with lived experiences. Mm -hmm. And I think and I think it helps that we're scheme boys as well a wee bit, uh, so we can kind of break down that macho, yeah. hard nut image, uh, Definitely. even for drum chapel or any other kind of scheme. I think at the very start we were identifying guys who were suffering a wee bit and maybe had went to their doctor and got told, okay, we'll put you in a waiting list. Mm. A very, very long waiting list. Yeah. And some guys had literally been told to just go and walk their dogs, you know, it's good for your mental health, get out the door. And that just wasn't enough for some people. Mm -hmm. No. So we recognised that there was a gap between social care, the medical profession, um, and just when people are struggling, there's there's, there's a gap in what services can provide. Mm -hmm. And a lot of a lot of the it's really simple. A lot of the time it's just having somebody to go and do things with meaningful purposeful activities. Yeah. And a lot of people sadly don't have anybody they can go and do those things with. Mm -hmm. Um so we've tried to We've tried to create a bridge here yeah. where people can get to can meet new people, do new things, mm -hmm. uh, and it's all a positive. I think the societal kind of isolation element here is something that <clears throat> is becoming more and more prominent because, <clears throat> as well as people who may legitimately live on their own or you know for whatever reason be you know sort of single or any of these types of things, there's also like a massive movement within like social media, digital you know content where people are zoned in on, you know, these things. And I think that in itself is isolating. So I think as a society, we are being kind of like isolated, not necessarily deliberately, but I think it's something that we, we need to be aware of and we need to be combating on a pretty much day-to-day -day basis, you know what I mean? So when <clears throat> people are coming in, <clears throat> are they experiencing the same as you? Are they saying, well, I was feeling a bit shit and there just wasn't anything available to me or are they being referred we've to you? We've had a variety of different reasons why guys get in touch with us. Mm -hmm. uh, some guys have, have said to us have been sitting in the house for two years, no known anybody. Mm -hmm. uh, just get their missus, get away, but that's all they've got. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's brutal, man. <laughs> if you've got wains, you'll know that's brutal. Mm -hmm. uh, and you need, I think, some guys need to be around other guys. We need that. We need to have that banter, that connection with other men. Mm -hmm. I think it's just part of who we are. Uh, so we've had guys like that, but we've also had guys came for like Gregor saying, I've been to doctors and I'm not getting any support for that, that's not working for me, I need something else, so it's not social isolation for them, it's just trying to get support, and that can just be a listening ear, can't it? Yep. And sometimes it's it's people that, uh, that have got a whole different mix of different reasons why people are looking for support, mm -hmm. you can, as you can understand, but all it takes is a crisis to occur in somebody's life, do you mm -hmm. know what I mean? Yeah. Um, the loss of a, a loved one and a friend, a relationship, a relationship breakdown. Mm -hmm. I mean, relationship breakdown is the number one biggest cause of homelessness, do you know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, and that's I mean, that's linked to mental health as well. Um, but it, it does, it feeds into the purpose you have in life and the connections. We've had lots of conversations recently about connections. Mm -hmm. um, and it's. I was just, I've always been really lucky to have really solid connections around me. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and I got to a point in my life through a professional capacity where I realised the majority did not. And that was quite a startling realisation for me. Yeah. Um, and then you think, the stuff that I went through in my life, if I didn't mm -hmm. have those solid connections, how would I have coped? Mm -hmm. And you look around and you see people that aren't coping. Yeah. And again, we're not we're no trying to create some um, some false thing. It's, it's we're authentic um, yeah. and organic, you know, mm -hmm. it's about, we're just guys. Coming together with different guys, talking about life. Mm -hmm. I think that's um, one of the things that really, you know, when we've been on our individual journeys with mental health, <clears throat> you come to this, the realisation that you need to do something about how you're feeling or, you know, what you're going through. And that first step, that, you know, the step that you go to the doctor for the first time or you go to a, a group like yours or, you know, something similar is massive. It's, it's, it's you know, it's quite scary. But I think you also realise, as you're saying, like how underprepared emotionally we are, not just as men, but like on the other side of that first step, I can now look at people and be like, none of us. It's not just men, but it, you know, we'll, we'll predominantly talk about men, given obviously the nature of your organisation. But like, I don't think any of us are particularly well trained with emotional intelligence no, whatsoever. Totally. You know what I mean? And that makes these steps so much harder to take because right. you just don't know. You're not prepared. Mentally, you're not prepared emotionally, and getting into a room with strangers and opening up 
can be a like really sort of terrifying prospect as a result. You know what I mean? Like, it can be a massive barrier. We've we've seen guys who have been saying, well, "I'm going to come this week. I'm going to come this week." Mm-hmm. They don't come. Yeah. And we've had some guys who eventually have come and have explained, "Look, I just wasn't ready, man. This is just I don't know what I'm coming into." But it sometimes takes somebody's experience to then say, "Look, I had that feeling. Mm-hmm. I went in, mm-hmm. and this is how it felt." Yeah. And they recover that mm-hmm. uh, in our program as well. And I think once you cross that threshold, it can be life changing yep. immediately. Mm-hmm. We do a wee thing in our talking group where we use a, we say to you, like, where's your human battery at? Like, as if it's a mobile phone battery. Yep. Just to kind of gauge where you're mentally right there and then. We've had guys come in who have been at a five. Does it proper? Like a hundred? Right, yeah, hundred eyes. So just like a mobile phone battery. So they've been at a five and close to lower. How do you gauge that? We let them gauge it, they gauge right, it. Okay, so, so it's all relative, obviously. Mm-hmm. Somebody's bad day could be like a 50 of them, and a, mm-hmm. it could be somebody, a, a five could be somebody's bad day. Yeah. So it's relative. Uh, so we just let them gauge it, and we don't influence it, or we just let them talk. That's all it's about. Mm-hmm. So we have had guys come at a five and leave at a 60. Mm-hmm. Proper. And again, you think that talking group's going to be depressing, and that's what you mm-hmm. might imagine that's it's that, going yeah. to be. <laughs> I'm telling honestly, the amount of laughs we've had yeah. in these groups has been unreal. And we've seen guys who are at the, the bottom of the barrel barely laughing yep. at their mm-hmm. first meeting and leaving at a 60 saying, I've no laughed like that for ages. Mm-hmm. And that's hard. And that's just a simple, again, a group of guys yeah. talking about guy stuff, being open and honest. And I think the honesty thing as well is a big thing. Yeah. Because we go through, through life almost like a, a Facebook life. Mm-hmm. Everything's cool, man. I've got cool shoes on, cool trainers, I've got yeah. stuff. It doesn't matter, but it doesn't no. matter if you're not happy. Mm-hmm, it yeah. really doesn't matter. And that's why, again, for me, the talking group's my favourite group mm-hmm. out of all the things we do, because people just unload and they leave feeling lighter. And this is the thing, it's like, <clears throat> we've, when we first started doing this, kind of tried to address the, you know, men don't talk thing, and it's become pretty apparent through the course of the last year as we've been getting sort of deeper and deeper into this with people that men actually, they want to talk. It's just that, they don't always necessarily have like the platform and space to do it. Mm-hmm. You know We're told like, as well that you can like any time that I, you take that or well, this is this all happens in your mind because it, it isn't actually true like you're saying. But any time you want to bring something up, you're almost telling yourself like, "No, oh, I need to just deal with this myself." Like this is just part of it. When I realised that I was suffering from anxiety, I my mind was blown, and I'd been yeah. feeling like that since I was like eighteen and I was like mm-hmm. twenty six. So I had like eight years, I just, yep. this feeling of dread every day. And I just felt like that was my normal way of being. Yeah. And that everybody either felt like, I just felt this is just normal. Right? And then you, you somebody told me, that I was saying, they were saying to me, I, I suffer from anxiety. And I was like, describe it to me. They described it to me and I was like, fuck man, that, that's how I feel. Mm-hmm. Right. How the, why? And then like you're saying, it's about you, it's all relative to yourself. So I've been living like that for eight years so that was just like well this is just normal life yeah. and everybody feel everybody feels this and then you realize no wait a minute this isn't a normal way of being uh, no. and then i had the same existential crisis that you're talking about i had a relationship end and couple that with, with my anxiety it just broke me do you know what i mean because i couldn't deal with it Aye. whereas if if i hadn't been suffering from anxiety i'd have probably been able to deal with it because mm-hmm. it's just a normal thing to be going yep. through do you know what i mean but my emotional state was so heightened that when that crisis hit me it was like right. i couldn't deal with it do you yeah. know what i mean and i think that that's like what matt's saying about like emotional intelligence and realizing it you don't need to feel like that there mm-hmm. are ways of getting out of that feeling mm-hmm. that's when yeah. everything changes and i that's think that's right. probably what happens when people come to the group they realize fuck man there's a way out of this do you know what i mean uh, absolutely and there's guys kicking about the now with how you were feeling that dread every single day and i've been there yeah. and it's a horrible thing man uh, I never had it for years, I only had it for three months, I had a relatively coasted life a wee bit okay. <laughs> until uh, kind of shit hit the fan for me mm. and I had that feeling for three months every day. The odd day would go away and I'd have pure moments of euphoria, but I feel fucking amazing man, mm. what yeah. is this? If I'd done something different, I'd try to monitor what I'm doing different to feel that way. Mm-hmm. It was just a, 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 a I messed with your head a wee bit. Oh, of course. But that, that feeling you're describing man was just brutal, absolutely brutal. It was like, I never felt so lonely in all my life. And that wee three month spell and everything just seemed dead dark and mm-hmm. I was making my I had to force myself to eat and stuff like that because I was like, What is going on here? Mm-hmm. I'm a bit yeah. I'm a big eater, I love I love my food, but I had to force myself porridge because I know I knew I never felt right, I knew something wasn't right. And I actually get pissed off that I recognised I had a mental health issue. 
because of the stigma attached to it, mm-hmm, yeah. and also the statistics. And I'm I'm walking about going, am I just a statistic, a statistic now? Mm-hmm. Is that what I'm a? And I'm so much more than that, but that really pissed me off, and that yeah. added to my anxiety. That's it. And you try uh, and hide it as well. Like you do you're, try and hide it. You're embarrassed. You, do. you, you don't want to burden people with it. You don't want to burden, because that's what you feel. You're like, yeah. it'll pass, it'll get better. But just Disney, man, you, you, you really need to get it off your chest that's and speak. Mm-hmm. And that's something we try and encourage with everybody. Yeah, there's even guys who approached us yesterday at an event we were at, who were saying, I had a wee moment then last night, or two nights ago, uh, I've ever felt it before. He said it was weird and his missus noticed it. And I says, look, come and talk to his man. Mm-hmm. It'll be the best thing you've done. Don't let that fester. Yeah. Because mm-hmm. it can be poisonous. Of course, so. Mm-hmm. So see when people turn up, like, what what's the actual process like? So do they need to get in touch before they turn up? Can they just turn up? Like, what's it like to like come to one of your meetings? We'll uh, advertise it on the Saturday, for example. And say the talking group's going to three to five tomorrow. Mm-hmm. They can just walk in. Nobody needs to DM us or private mail us, they just walk in. Gregor facilitates it with Fraser. So you what he kind of talks So basically, about. We're, we're up in Drumchapel Shopping Centre, there's a charity shop. It's a uh, chest, heart and stroke charity shop. And in the back, there's a community room, which uh, that's where we hold our, our talking group. Okay. So like Peter says, we advertise it and people are free just to come up mm-hmm. at their own discretion. Mm-hmm. Um, and if they're struggling, they can contact us before it and we can meet them and we can come with them if that's something that they find easier. Um, it's, it's, a real, it's a peer-to-peer model that we use, so mm-hmm. there's no professionals in the room, it's just guys um, with lived experience, you know, um, and it's not just focusing on depression or anxiety, it's anything, it's, it's life we're coming to discuss. Right. Um, when we're in that room, it's quite relaxed, we've got our playlist playing in the background, we're, we're tunes on, a cup of tea and coffee, you guys can have a wee chat before we get started, and then what we do is we ask a series of questions. Okay. Uh, we sit in a circle and a ball gets passed around. When the ball is in your hands, it's your chance to, to speak mm-hmm. uh, and everyone else listens. Um, we have a break where guys can, can share advice and, and swap some input. Um, so that's basically the, the, the model. The, some of the questions stick the same, they stay the same every week and some mm-hmm. change. Um, and we have we have a, an opportunity for guys to ask the group questions or some feedback or some advice. Okay. Um, so that's the model we've used so far and it, and, it, and it seems to work. It's just real people. But again, you're talking about that, that stigma about being able to walk through the first door. The, the tagline that I've heard for so many people that come to their talking group is, I wish I'd done this months ago yep. or weeks ago. Um, they recognised that um, that was a false, that, that fear um, was not necessary. Yeah. But that stigma heightens up that fear. That the stigma tells you that you're broken and you need to go somewhere to be fixed. Mm-hmm. Um, well, we're not here to fix anybody. We're here to hold the mirror up and show people um, the power that they have. Mm-hmm. Their life their life experiences and the struggles that they've had isn't a weakness, it's a huge <coughs> strength. Because whether they're still back, going through it or they've overcame it, they can share that with other people and, and help other people avoid some of the, the, the mistakes they've made. Mm-hmm. And, and just those guys come together and talking is so powerful. Another thing that sort of manifested uh, from the talking group was a sort of a support network that happens um, online virtually. Yeah. And, and naturally because guys are making pals and they're keeping in touch with each other. Mm-hmm. So you're having people who maybe had one or two connections in their life, maybe having you know, three, four, five, or sometimes actually 10, 20, 30 yeah. in some yeah. cases. Yeah. Um, so they are they doing like, stuff <coughs> outside as well? I think they do, they Gary falls in and he's got a, like a, an anxiety group and he was saying stuff like people Aye, like saying to him, well, we met up on Tuesday Aye. and Aye. he's not there. And he was like, first of all, I felt a wee bit like, oh, what the fuck, they're meeting up with me. <laughs> like, sort of taking his purpose away a wee bit. Like, you need to include yeah. me in everything. But then he realised that, no, this is good that people uh, are actually, like, supporting each other. Do you know what I mean? The, we, that, in that room on a Sunday, there's a wee spark, and if a fire comes for that, man, amazing. We've mm-hmm. actually, see, when we just started, again, we're relatively, relatively strangers at the start. Mm-hmm. Uh, me and Gregor know each other through a work capacity, and the rest of the guys just came to a wee dad group we started. That's how it all kicked off. Right. So... The, the guys who came along, Fraser and Gav, Fraser's a recovering alcoholic, and historically he would just kick it, he's got three kids under four, mm-hmm. you can imagine what that's like. Yeah, so certainly drive and, me back to the drink. Aye, <laughs> so <laughs> in the past he's, he's told us this, he's like, I was uh, going off, off my nut in the house, he says, but I went to Gav's house, and he sat in his house had a cup of tea, and he had a gab. Now that's, that's strong, man, he's getting out, he's got a positive out there, Yeah. just mm-hmm. through this wee group. And the two boys are trustees, the same as we are. Mm-hmm. Uh, and there's so many other connections that have just it's like a ripple effect. Yeah, mm-hmm. people just start supporting each other, and it's it's just class, man. It's no, just something I mean, that I found. We uh, again, just like a kind of 
thing that feels like it's sort of repeating itself when we talk to people about this is that, as you were saying, like, I've never encountered anybody that went, do you know what, I went to this, I spoke to a counsellor, I went to a group or whatever it is, and when I eventually got to a place where I could actually speak, I then regretted doing it. Like, nobody I've ever encountered has ever went, I regret talking, mm -hmm. I regret bringing that up, I mm -hmm. regret, you know, going to this group or talking to my GP or whatever it is, but there's such a big, like, mental block before that step that people get obviously put off but as I say on the other side I've never encountered anybody that goes yeah. do you know what I wish I'd kept my mouth shut yeah. mm -hmm. you know what I mean yeah. and I think it's great that off the back of that you know there's a community building so it's because I think we've touched on this with other guests and other subjects as well is that people crave community so the day and I think when you're talking about isolation and stuff like that that's one of the biggest sort of weapons that you mm -hmm. can use against you know, isolation against poor mental health, about poor emotional intelligence is just having that community. It mm -hmm. is. And that's why, so our programme <coughs> consists of five days. Right. Again, it's all volunteer led. So uh, on a Monday, we've got a family walk. It's the only opportunity where women and kids can come along. Right. Uh, and you don't even need to have a, a man to see if you're a family. Just mm -hmm. come along and meet other people, let the wings all play. Because we're just trying to build connections. That's what yep. it's about. And giving people other resources for support. Mm -hmm. uh, on the Tuesday, we've got one of our members, uh, Big George, he's a pure keen hill walker. All right. So he leads a hill walk, he just takes us up the Wangi or the Greeny and just says, hey, we're meeting here, if you're coming, we'll meet you here and we'll walk up. Mm -hmm. Pure simple, this doesn't yeah. really, it's mm -hmm. no rocket science, this stuff. And the, as you're walking, you're talking, that naturally happens and you're bonding. Yep. The Wednesday, one of our trustees, Gav, he does the uh, letter picking. And although that might sound a pure two days task, see when you're focused on picking a can of coke up, you're not thinking about the bills you've got to pay yeah. mm -hmm. or the Wednesday you're boxing, you're focused on that can. Yeah. See that, that break for that stress? Oh, you're also kind of gain back as well, aren't you? Yeah, yeah. 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 See when you see, see it at the end of the day and it's spotless, man, and you feel proud of yourself, mm -hmm. and you should. On a Thursday, uh, Fraser, he runs the football. We've been donated football strips for Shawbridge, uh, footballs for Drumchart United, uh, Nets for my mate. And... The boys just play football every Thursday, just turn right. up. And again, it's for anybody. Mm -hmm. You don't need to be super fit or super talented. You can be rotten and still turn up and get a game. Mm -hmm. so it's just about getting out and meeting other guys. Mm -hmm. uh, and the Sunday's a talking session. And on top of these things, other other wee activities uh, sort of morph and come into creation. So uh, Peter talks about the big George that takes us out on the walking groups. So from that, uh, we decided we wanted to aim bigger. And last week we went and done Ben Nevis, the guy right. the group. Um, and so it, tap it there, see there we go on, on the screen life. there, aye. Um, and that, for example, the, the, the letter picking someday in the community recognised that and put us up for an award. Oh, right. um, so we're finalists in an award. The football team that started to take traction and out with the, the kickabout, the late kickabout we're doing a Thursday. There's an official main matter football team being established. Mm -hmm. It's going to play different people around Scotland. Nice. Um, so we, we need to pinch ourselves sometimes and remind ourselves we've only been around for about four months, four and a half uh -huh. months, really, you know. Yeah, aye. Um, and I, but we're in. the guys actually got to play at Almondville. <laughs> All right. In the oh, stadium. Amazing man. Oh, the boys are you buzzing. Should, there definitely could definitely be like a sort of peer group league happening for football because they're popping up everywhere and all of them involve uh, games of football. I think everyone yeah. that we've spoken to. See the thing is, but I was thinking about this all day, there's a wee football team called Mental Health United. See every football team, they're a mental health support team, we've been mm. known it. Yeah. Uh -huh. See getting out with the boys and just being you and just having the banter, having yep. a few beers, kicking a ball about. That's a, that's a mental, that's a negative uh, mental health definitely. release. Mm -hmm. So we've even known it, every single team out there is contributing to yeah. positive mental health. Absolutely. Mm. I think like the the community thing, that's definitely something that we all I mean, I think we all thought that or they they thought or whoever they are that the internet was gonna fix all this sort of like disconnection that we and it'll be like a sort of social mm -hmm. utopia where everybody will come <laughs> together and then when social media came up it was like this is great, like you can put your event up and people will tell you that they're coming and X, Y, and Z, but it's almost had this sort of opposite effect where people like <clears throat> like Something that jumped to it that you were talking earlier. Um, one of the big pieces of advice that you get, or uh, I've heard from mental health professionals, is stop lying. Either stop lying to yourself, but stop lying to other people. Somebody says to you, How are you feeling? You don't feel well. Tell them that you don't mm -hmm. feel well. Mm -hmm. And it's almost like the internet or like social media has made it so that you need to live this sort of like idealistic lifestyle and like everything needs to be brilliant. Like we were in, I was on holiday in Tenerife. 
and there was this guy in Lassie, and no judgment. I'm since my like, mental health crisis, I've become stupidly observant of like, mm. other people. I just watch, and I'm yeah, always I, thinking, I wonder what this guy's I, what's going on in this guy's head <laughs> and going on in that, and try and watch their behaviour. Even like some mates, I'll be like, oh, yeah. if, like mm-hmm. if they're all right, and try and watch their behaviour. But there's this guy in Lassie, and I seen them. They were there for. They must have been there for the full weeks. I seen them at the start, and I seen them at the end of the week. I shit you not, like they went up, get changed, came down, took about four or five selfies, and then went away and get changed into normal clothes, and then went and had their dinner. But they sat like around the pool, no. and it was I was looking at it and I was thinking they feel that much disconnected for like who they are as actually are as a person that they don't feel like they can just wear their normal clothes and yep. take some photos of them having a good time. No. They need to create this sort of circumstance, and I think that's indicative to. How we all kind of love a wee bit. Is sure, there was a dude this week went their on uh, Instagram that was getting, and this is the pressure that I think maybe some people are under nowadays to live this idealised life. And I think it is something that definitely does contribute to people's ill mental health and, you know, well being. The, the fella that was, uh, he was sitting on the edge of the bath naked, ah, I seen that. tattooed and oiled up, yep. and he was like facing a towel, and it was pure RIP Nan. Yep. And oh, you're like, right. Jesus <laughs> fucked it, like, come on, you did not need to like pure Aye. baby oil yourself up and pose in the buff to like pure grand. He's, he's, you, like, you he's, know he's got his mate, he's got his mate, and he, he's Aye, the somebody else is taking the photo. He's sitting in the bath, hotly like I've just described, and he's must have said to his mate, right, take a photo of me doing this. Then I write a lip and it's actually quite pure. sad. That's it. I mean you can't Definitely. even mourn the death of your your grand without that part of your brain kicking in and going, and how can I how can I use this? Aye. How can I That's like right. in the mm. types of circumstance like you should be doing exactly what we're talking about. You should be talking to your closest mates, you should be connecting with other human beings. Aye, instead and, of saying to your mate, take a photo of me bollock to an RIP <laughs> nan, you should be saying, mate, <coughs> my my nan died yesterday. You, you know what I mean? Like and you no know, actually have a conversation yeah. with your mate rather than being like, how's the lightning here for my boss? You know, <laughs> some things pretty good actually. Right? <laughs> <laughs> There's some things you can do unless you're in person. Do you know what I mean? Look straight at somebody's eyes and give them that sense that you're mm-hmm. totally listening to them and you're being empathetic and you're with them. Yeah. Give them a big hug. Do you know what I mean? And telling them that you're, mm-hmm. you're there for them. You're mm-hmm. them do you know what I, mean? I think as well, it's quite interesting this week that you know. I think there's, you know, a recognition that this is maybe a contributing factor to people's, you know, ill health and well-being. And I think as Instagram they were talking about removing, removing the likes. The likes. Uh, yeah, so Thailand actually like, like trying to undercut that like fake yeah. you know, appreciation that we have for each other and maybe make, as you say, people's connections a bit more real because they're not actually what they're chasing likes or retweets See, or whatever the fuck like it is they're in about. It's, Aye. It's like, well, this is how people value base value in their lives by a like. And it's that wee endorphin kick they get, oh, mm-hmm. I've got 10 likes on this post, I'll do more of that. Yep. So I only get one like in the last post, I'm not doing that anymore. Absolutely. And people just live their lives based on stupid, empty likes. How they look instead of how they feel. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Tackling how you feel might throw up some curveballs that you need to you know, not mm-hmm. focus on um, and address. And that's not always easy. I think, the, like I think social media's got a big part to play. Mm-hmm. I was I do youth work as right. well, it's my job. Uh, and we need to start implementing screen time cutouts. So we just say to the young team, come in, get your phone. We'll put it in the drawer. Okay. So they can enjoy their time and see when they mm-hmm. take their phones off them. Obviously, it's voluntary. They don't need to take, don't need to geese it. Yeah. But when they, the ones who do geese their phones, their enjoyment of that evening is probably three or four times as much. The ones who are just sitting scrolling, still talking to their pals who've got their phones. Aye. Just scrolling. When you're doing that, even when I do that, yeah, so my missus is good for this for me, or she'll be like, she'll just shut up. And I'll just be like, what's happened? Mm-hmm. She'll be like, get off your fucking phone when I'm talking to you because you're not paying attention. Like you're saying you've got all these like social cues that maybe you're like, even if like maybe a mate's not feeling great or whatever and they might be sitting there telling you without telling you, just being like, oh, I've had a shite week and you're just like, all right, mate, aye, aye, aye. It's almost like fucking put your phone down and actually talk to people yeah. and connect with them. That's yeah. what's going to yeah. make this sort of difference. Um, I, I'm really worried about younger people. Definitely, I've got to say, man. Like, We've, if you, have, you see people, I mean, particularly. I don't know if it just stands out because it, it is kind of strange. But I've been out in restaurants, and you're looking at they look twenty one, twenty two. I'm thirty five, so I can I can yeah. say that they're young people. And uh, unfortunately, I know. and. Um, there was one time I know you, you keep in... bringing that up in these episodes, man. Stop oh. reminding me that I'm old. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking right. hell, man. will be honest. Um, Aye. There was Folk one, can see it. <laughs> there, was one, there was one time in particular I remember just sitting 
with my girlfriend and just turned and was like, look at they two and they, they were definitely on a first date and they hadn't said two fucking words to each mm-hmm. other and been sitting there for about half an hour and they were taking and then their, their food came out and they were like, oh, take photos of the food mm-hmm. and then they took a selfie with each other and it was all smiling and blah, blah. but the actual, the actual situation that they were in didn't reflect what you th- what you could almost see was happening on like the social media feed yeah. where, but then I think that the damaging thing about that uh, it damages the individual that's doing it but it also damages their mates because then <clears throat> people like anybody's sitting in the house and going oh look there's Paul and he's out with his missus and they're having a fucking great time see when I go I'm just sitting and I'm worried about X, right. Y and Z. you're like, yeah. they're the exact same, mate. That's, That's right. why they're distracting themselves with their fucking phone. Right. Like, why do people need to take their phone out and take photos of their food? It's because they're thinking, they're worried and their brain's gone 100 mile an hour and then they're thinking, well, if I put it on Instagram, then I'll maybe get 180 likes in the next hour and every time one of the notifications goes yep. off, I'm feeling a wee bit better. I've a wee bit better, wee bit better. I find it, even in recent weeks, as, as I was saying to you guys off mic, the last six, eight weeks of just felt like every episode has got bigger and bigger and we get more and more engagement every week and it's something I'm you've got a level of like public exposure I haven't been in the bands before, it's something I'm kind of struggling with a wee bit because I'm torn between, it's great that folk are getting in touch and you know we can provide yeah. them with any sort of help that we, that we can, but I find myself becoming somewhat like, oh my god, that phone's buzzing and it is quite a rewarding experience when yeah. somebody's, you know what I mean, but at the same time I'm now like, do you know what Turn the phone out. Okay. I don't care what lights flashing on it. Yeah. I'll, you know what I mean. Check it in the morning or whatever. And so, f- in terms of young people, like that's, it's, it's, I think it's unrealistic to expect kids to have that level of self control because for them, you know, we, we we remember a world before social media, before all these mm-hmm. digital devices, and you know the associated you know pressures that come with them. But like, they don't like this is normal. This is something that has been there all their lives. Yeah. And we'll continue to be there all our lives. And <clears throat> I'm really interested in that side of it for a kid's point of view because when we had done Proverbs in for um, Brother in Arms, uh, one of our early episodes, he was talking about like resilience, mm-hmm. uh, emotional intelligence in kids and how this was something that they were going to move from men towards kids because we want to now get kids emotionally literate at a much younger age you're seeing a lot of like mindfulness and meditation yeah. starting to creep into schools and uh, you know how kids handle themselves so like are you do you see a crossover in your work with kids uh, alongside you know your experience with like men matters is there similar threads or is, is it different in terms you know of what, what it, kids face I think for kids see the things that's coming up for me is the body image stuff right that's the big thing for me it's body image, body image, because when they click onto Facebook or Instagram, main so Instagram, it's just these models, these made up models who aren't even real people. Yeah. Half the time, uh, who they aspire to be like. And it's that aspiration, it's, just so, it's a negative aspiration, because then they say, see the amount of photos I've seen a young team doing, either doing this, hiding their face in photos. Mm-hmm. Or scribbling their faces out uh-huh. in the photos. Their phone in front of their face in the mirror because they've got no makeup on or whatever it might so, be. So see, for mm-hmm. me, that's them saying, I don't like my face. Mm-hmm. And that leads to, I know it may sound drastic, but it leads to self-harm because they start to dislike themselves. Yep. And that's really concerning for me. And I've come across young people uh, who have approached me with this, who have, uh, have said to me, yeah. I'm hurting myself. And it's fucking, excuse my language. It's no, sorry, uh, mate, crack on. <laughs> I swear all the time. I've been spending like a I've been, I've been doing youth work for 15 years, man. I love my job and I yep. love to see positive outcomes for young people, especially mm-hmm. for places like Drumchapel. Yep. Uh, and things have got better for them in terms of their aspirations. But when it comes to the social media side of things, it's just they're on it constant. They're on mm-hmm. it constant. If it's yep. not a phone, it's a computer game. Mm-hmm. It's constant. And again, we talked about social isolation earlier on. Mm-hmm. These wins, man, they just. They don't talk to each other. They literally sit beside each other and just scroll through. Yep. I was up Loch Lomond with a young team doing the tree zone recently. And uh, it was three, three young team, a boy and two lassies. And they were just at themselves, but the three of them are walking side by side, scrolling. He's, he's listening. Aye. And I'm, mm-hmm. I, so I stopped the young, my young team and I says, look at that. And I went, what are they doing? I said, you stay that. Aye, <laughs> that's it. You know what it's I mean? I said, up your everybody does that the right. It's like we're so the majority co- of people so are worried. Like people on the recognise us on Facebook. So mm-hmm. we, need to, we need to do something to get a like. Yeah. And it's just that constant reward me by giving me a like mm-hmm. uh, society. Man. I think like we're, we're in a bit of, we're in kind of 
dangerous but good territory because people like so I don't know if you're the same sort of ages but we are in our mid 30s but we're, we've like woke up to this and again man I know <laughs> I, I, do you know what I'm glad you say you don't know because I'm 37 <laughs> right, well, I, well I'm approaching 40 and so do we just need to fucking 20s just need to do it 30 days but we are, we are starting to wake up and through these types of things we are we are realising things like this so we can or we should now like do what Dan Proverbs is saying and take this yeah. what we're learning and educate people because if you were to go back five years ago I mean I, I think I joined Facebook somebody said to me ah, you joined Facebook in 2013 right so it was like six years ago see if somebody was to go back six years ago and say this thing is actually going to damage your mind mm. I'd be like, fucking shut up Aye. you kidding on it's a yeah. bunch of pictures and me talking shite about Celtic on a fucking Sweet. on a page yep. How's this, how can this be damaging but unfortunately, the people that create these things have are doing all the research into how to make it addictive, how oh, to make I... it vindictive as well. And then the marketing companies and advertising companies are now spinning it back around on you and starting to use it to sort of promote their message, which is always consume, 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 That's consume. Right, consume. Totally. Absolutely. So now you've got like, so I seen one the other week and I was actually gobsmacked. Near a fence tail, the hub that was on Towie. Uh, Gemma Collins is out selling weight loss tea. No, no offence, Gemma, but you're the last person that should be selling weight loss tea because you've, 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 you're you've not practising what you preach. She's like, this is what I'm going to use to lose weight. And she's <laughs> right. wanting people to buy it. And you're Aye. like, well, you, you don't even know if it fucking works for what. And she's Aye. probably never going to use it. But we're in this place now where these people are like the fucking guys that used to chop your door and your dad be like, get to fuck That's because right. they're trying to sell you fucking snake oil. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. this is, we've, we've ended up regressing back to this and people are buying these things in the hope that they're going to help them and then surprise, surprise, they're no well because their stomach's yeah. fucking Aye. hurting them because yeah. they're taking in these fucking diarrhea tea. So it, we're in this sort of dangerous territory with young people, but also it's probably a good thing that we're starting to talk to each other about it and open up because... Now we can take it to them and say, to them, yeah. this is what works. Like, yeah. that it isn't going to be the same as what we had, where we were just sort of stabbing in the dark and like floating through life and going, why do I not feel right? Uh, it's like, yeah. Now we can go, this is why it's That's a combination right. of everything that you're doing. And you see it on programmes like Love Island as well, the product placement stuff. Right. It's absolutely, it just doesn't no break for commercials. Mm-hmm. There's a, even, I was watching the Hotel Transylvania and the guy's got a Sony mobile phone. And a cartoon. And a cartoon. And remember, we used to be the orange, the orange, the orange. Turn your phone off before the movies. Yeah, that's right. Put the phones yeah. in the fucking movies now. Uh, and it's just a case. It's just product placement, product placement. And like, I need that. I need to have that. To be happy. Yeah. I need to have that. And be happy. And see, you're, you're saying, man, we can identify that now. We can cut that pretty quick and say to the young team coming up, this is what they're doing. Right. They're playing a game with you, and they want you to buy, and they won't say they'll say you're not happy until you, you buy bought. it. Mm-hmm. And when you buy it, you feel good for a half an hour on the phone. Yeah, like, like, done. Aye. I think I'll get that myself. Do you know Aye. what I mean? Went and got pure buzzing. Like, can it? Like, I'm in that space now. I've dropped my iPhone and smashed the, the back it, and I'm like, my upgrade's due in two months. <laughs> can I wait to get this new? But then I w- and I work in a mobile phone shop, so I was sitting and I was going through the new iPhone, and I was like, I don't fucking need this. Yeah. How much is it going to cost me to claim my insurance to get this fixed? 150 quid. Like, I'm going to do that. Aye. Why the fuck am I considering buying a, a 1200 pound fucking iPhone <laughs> when I'll set it up? Look at it and go. It's the exact same as my last one. Exact same as my last one. It's almost like perpetual fucking like needing or something else, thinking that this other thing's going to make us feel better. When the actual fact is, you're the only one really that can make us feel better and, and take responsibility. See, this, see the conversation we're having with guys. That's just, it's the real stuff that's making you feel better. Yeah, it's addressing what's causing your problems, not buying something. That'll give you a wee, a wee ten minute endorphin release, a wee mm-hmm. buzz a new t-shirt or a new pair of shoes but it's not going to fix it's a yeah. plaster mm-hmm. and some of the guys I mean every guy has got c- characteristics that you, you can't buy do you yeah. know what I mean that are made like some of the people who are working with just, are, just the, the, the energy they have for other mm-hmm. people or the, the lengths and depths they'd go to help somebody or you know it's just I think it's a great thing to tap into so it was like and I think <clears throat> because you've got a, a kind of holistic and sort of community based approach it really combats so much of what we're talking about right now because you're addressing you know a level of fitness you're getting people socialized you're building community you're addressing and you know confronting uh you know mental health issues and stuff like that and i, and I think honest to god man like we need mary you know what mm-hmm. i mean like especially with understanding as you've got maybe a younger people and stuff because that's 
that's where the battle is the new for me because I I, I won't go into too much detail, but I, I, my my young niece suffers from anxiety and she came and stayed with us a couple of weeks ago and she couldn't settle down to sleep at night, she's ten. Um and she had to get her worry knots app out and meditate. Mm-hmm. And I was like, Wow, I mean I was looking at it and going, see if I'd known about meditation at ten years old, like what kind of difference could that have had on my life as a man? Because I spent, you know, ten years in the total wilderness, just as you say, stabbing about in the dark. My partner looked at it as, oh my god, that's a sin that that way mm-hmm. needs to do that. That's where my mind went. And it's of. like, totally, it is in a sense that anybody has to yeah. manage themselves in this way. Whatsoever, we would obviously prefer a world where nobody had mm-hmm. to face these concerns or yeah. issues. But the we fact don't. that nowadays we're actually educating kids at that young an age, yeah, I think is. Can only be a good thing. See, for your niece to recognise she needs to go to that resource to get help to mm-hmm. calm down, then that's a, that's a positive. That is a yeah. positive, man. Because like, I initially just thought, there, why do we need that? We shouldn't need that. Why are we in so I didn't need it. Mm. It's like, maybe you did. No, maybe I. Maybe <laughs> you did yeah, fucking I need absolutely it. Absolutely did need it. I mean, I, I, I remember, you know, Sleep instances of self harm and stuff as a um, young kid, myself, yeah. you know what I mean? Like, uh, and, and older, where had I had those resources and that emotional understanding, and even just the permission to go, I don't feel right. Yeah. And I'm, I I know how I can then address that. Like, I think that would have had a massive impact on my life. And I think it's exactly why I look at that and go, as a shame. And I would prefer her to be a, a happy, healthy young lady with the need of this. But if she needs it, then I'm glad that she understands what it is exactly. and how it can help, you know what yeah. I mean? Like, um, but I, I mean... The mere the merrier in that respect. I think it's we need to be taking that conversation out to schools and and you know mm-hmm. out to young kids and actually showing them even you know kind of like a kids group for example. My missus was talking about she's in the middle of doing kids mental health courses and stuff like that. Or just about to start them, sorry. And that's one of her ultimate goals is that she'd love to do kind of what you do, mm-hmm. except for you know kids. Fantastic. You know what I mean? Like, mm-hmm. So what, what do you think of the the, the sort of main signs? Uh, so are you getting sort of like common, no symptoms because it's no, as you're saying, it's no everybody's mentally ill. Some people will just have poor mental health, which is, I think is, is so there's part of like, especially 2019's like an important distinction that there are people that suffer from mental illness, but there's people that just suffer from poor mental health, yep. which is like the difference between chronic disease and just exactly. like sort yeah. of no feeling great <clears throat> or whatever. Aye. But is there any sort of common threads like, um, because one of the major things for me when I look back at myself was is that I had nothing outside of work and relationships. That was all that I had, was went to work, came home and sat with my girlfriend mm. pretty much every day. And it was the sort of, the breakdown of anything extra um, and all of these things. That's what I've done with my life is just add all these extra bits and pieces onto it. So is there anything like, so if anybody's listening and they're maybe thinking, hmm, I don't know, no, I feel all right, but there's maybe something that they could notice in their life that would mean you should maybe go and talk to people. So, see if you have an anger outbursts, that's a good indicator you're not happy. Yep. Of your breaking down greeting. Mm-hmm. That's an indicator something's not right. Or you've got that wee knot in your belly. That wee dread, that wee kind of, yep. something's bad's going on, or something bad's going to happen. There are wee mm-hmm. signs, that's your body telling you, mm-hmm. you're not in a good place. Mm-hmm. And that's not, that's not a bad thing, that's a positive, because your body's communicating with you. Mm-hmm. And that's just that's your body's there to keep you alive. And yep. That's what it's telling you. Get help. Mm-hmm. So that's that's the three main, main ones for me that I have. I don't know if Gregor's getting anywhere. I would say if you're you're treating people, if you're pushing the people you love away, if you're treating people you love and yourself in a way that you don't think's conducive to mm-hmm. um, good mental health, then uh, there's something wrong. No, no long for me, it was just this overwhelming feeling of something's not right. You know, there's uh, something's off balance. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm no, I'm, I'm no the complete whole. I'm, I'm, there's something missing, um, and just feeling that there was a, there's a void there that needs yeah. filled, um, and if people are trying to fill that void with alcohol or drugs or gambling or sex or shopping or whatever it is, um, if you're trying to just put a big plaster over uh, issues, then that would oh. identify that you may need to talk to somebody. <laughs> right, right. Hey, that's that was big ones for me, like, and I'm. That's something that I say to people is that see if you're emotionally almost unhinged, so like anything 
like sparks your ass. And I've had a couple of people almost say to me, like, calm down, mate, like, no, it doesn't mean, do you know what I mean? Like, if I've seen somebody get raging at nothing and you're like, mate, maybe you should, yeah, maybe that's not right. Like, but you, you're, if you're emotionally, like, sort of hyperactive or if you road rage, like, all these, maybe you, you need to go and talk to somebody, do you mm-hmm. know what I mean? Like, it's right. no normal for but you to be raging at, like, a cat or a dog or <laughs> be raging at your wane because they'd spilt some milk or uh, yeah, smashed a plate uh, like these yeah. types of things that you see, I mean, a big one for me uh, mm-hmm. I mean I, I, I seen a woman the other week going and I see it quite lots of work in tune but this one I was like fuck man and then I go down like a rabbit hole or like wonder what that wee boy's life's like and blah 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 but she's kind of shouldn't they but the, la- the lassie literally like screamed at this wee boy and dragged him and like mm. what are you doing and the wee guy all the wee guy was doing was taking a wrapper out the bin and he looked about three. Mm. And I, and but that's kinda normal, isn't it? It's like that's a sort of normal behaviour now, is that you, yep. you see people pure screaming at their veins and well, you're like, mm, that's a lot of no. these are shoes, I mean you talk about especially masculine sort of anger. I mean, it doesn't help that these are your stereotypical sort of Glasgow hard man behaviours, do you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um and they're just poisonous. They're poisonous to the community, they're poisonous to families, and they're poisoning ourselves. So we need to stay on stitch up. Mm. That's no hard. Not that's a pure weakness. What kind of response do you get from men? when you're maybe because that that is like we've got this thing now like victim blaming where it's almost like you can't put you can't put the onus onto the individual because it's not their fault it's like society and all but yeah we get that right you've been brought up in a scheme like i was brought up in a scheme and that has meant that you've got these bad attitudes that then rule your behavior that's fine you can acknowledge that but ultimately it's up to you to fucking unwind it and unpick it and you need to take responsibility for that it's no victim blaming but do you get any kind of like pushback especially for like young people when you're saying to them maybe like you don't need to be a hard man because that was like the pinnacle when I was growing up like yeah. see if you were the best fighter the best football player got all the birds that was right. literally the pinnacle of you being like in the scheme do you know yep. what I mean so do you get people coming back going basically like no that's the way I want to be I want to be like so, from my experience so far with this group, we've not had anybody say they don't want to talk about stuff like you're saying. Everybody comes along and talks and shares. They end up being pure. You have a perception, because we're off in the kind of same area, we know each other just to see. Kind of. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You have a perception of what that person's like. But once you get to talk to them in a real level, no, yeah. the pretend level, mm-hmm. it's, you know what I mean? It's just, guys are sound, man. Guys are sound. And that leads me to the conclusion that everybody's sound yeah. we're mm-hmm. just kidding on we're hard yep. or we're we want to be dodgy guys or we want to be kind of whatever I don't know but I think underneath it all man we're all just the same just fighting our way through life we're mm-hmm. fighting the same battles Yep. Uh, and I think we can fight the battles together mm-hmm. and I, I, I definitely think again you've had some guys come along who hang about again they're in their 30s now the same as us kick about with pals you see because they've came to a group their pals were more inclined to come because uh-huh. they have to that step and that's what I was saying earlier on see being scheme boys again that stereotypical hard man for drum chat was a hard scheme no. it's almost a proudness to that yeah. mm-hmm. I think Glasgow Glasgow's a hard scheme a, we've got a bit of pride in that it's strange <laughs> right? uh, it's, it's a strange odd. pride uh, it's in strange that effort. and see we we can break it away from that a wee bit and see aye maybe it's a hard place or some mad people in this there place is. but you don't need to. You don't need to be hard to survive here. Yeah, I don't mm-hmm. think. I, I don't think we're in. You know, the realms of no mean city anymore by any stretch Aye. of the imagination. But uh, there are still a lot of places out there that have it rough and, and a lot of rough people in it. Mm-hmm. And like, <clears throat> but that's that is where I think you know society drives a lot of this. And some it's not necessarily about. Um, there is a level of personal responsibility you need to take for yourself if you are going to manage yourself in an effective manner. But I think when we look at and, and for me, like I'm aware of my behaviour when I start to have those outbursts and anger. And it's always been something that like people would go, mate, like I'm sitting in the office, so I'm going, mate, like you're trying to bring some pretty negative energy today. Mm. And I'm like, aye, but you know, that's me just venting. I like to get it out and let it go. That's what I used to always say to myself. I just get it let it, get it yeah. out there and let it go. But what I'm not realising in that is that when I get it out there and let it go, I'm poisoning the air around me mm-hmm. and there's 10-15 people, people around me who have got an 8 hour shift to get through and then that gets contagious and infectious mm-hmm. and the next person starts and so on and so forth mm-hmm. and I think that's something we definitely need to be aware of is that sort of negative overtone of our environment or atmosphere yeah. and I think now having addressed some issues that I, you know I've got myself I tend to find now that when I feel that outburst building 
I'll go away and meditate for 10 minutes mm-hmm. or go out for a smoke or whatever it is and yeah. like, kind of remove myself from the situation. But again, that's no, like when we, because of where we come from, because of where we've grown up, avoiding confrontation, avoiding that conflict yeah. is not something that any of us are really massively trained very well uh, today. And weakness. I think because of that, you know, I'm, I'm tough, I'm hard. Like uh, that aggression is something that we will lean into when we should absolutely be doing the opposite. You know what I mean? Yeah. See, yep. I think it's so well, you've just described it. Everybody knows it pisses them off. So see if you can identify your triggers before they come. Mm-hmm. Like so see for me, I love my wings to bits, but see four in the morning when they're screaming their head off. <laughs> that I'm a grumpy guy. Yeah. But see if I come down the stairs and I hear them greeting, I'll say to myself, right, this is gonna be challenging. Just deal with it, they're no happy either. See if I can can internalise that first, approach it with a totally different mindset. Yep. I go in there calm and ready for what's coming. Mm-hmm. And see if you can pinpoint your triggers, you'll deal with them a lot better. Mm. That's, and that's like a sort of bit of advice I give to people all the time because I know it helps me. Definitely. So if you see a wee woman who's driving slow in front of you and you've got a bit of road rage, just accept what's happening and say, this will piss me off. Just acknowledge it and deal with it before you get to the stage where you're yep. like, red flag. Aye, aye. he's getting, yeah, he's coming off you're like, fucking bastard. Like, aye. And again, everybody, every enough. individual person knows what pisses them off. We all know what annoys aye, themselves. Aye. So, One of the worst questions to actually answer is, what makes you happy? Mm-hmm. See, when you say to somebody, like, what is it that makes you happy? Mm-hmm. Sometimes you just see them going like, because nothing makes them happy. Do you know <laughs> what I mean? Like, nothing really aye. makes them happy. Or if it's, it might be that, like, oh, when I'm doing like, a mobile phone upgrade, or like, oh, you see people, they're, they're buzzing about going and getting a new motor, getting uh, a new house, and yeah. you're like, that, surely that can't be just what makes you happy. Do you know yeah. what I mean? Like, you need to start to appreciate the wee things that you get every day. Yes. Know, yeah. the, know the events that happen once every four years. Yeah. When you're looking forward to it that much, you get it, you're disappointed. You're like, what the fuck's my life all about here? Do you know what I mean? I seen a wee Facebook post the other day. It was just like a wee meme or a meme. I don't know what you call them. Meme. A meme. <laughs> <laughs> Skilled. <Scoop. laughs> you connected me. You're not judging me. <laughs> and it says, I would rather do things than have things. Mm-hmm. And that just put a clip to me. I'm, I love, like two weeks ago we went God's walking. Last week we went to Ben Nevis. That stuff, that's, that's experiences. Mm-hmm. That's yeah. doing it with people who you like. Rather, see, doing that rather than getting a, a new pair of trainers. I'd much rather do the hill walk than a new pair of trainers. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know what I mean? So I think it's a, an important message here is to go experience things. Definitely, go taste them. them. See, when I think back to when I was like unhealthy like mentally unhealthy the idea on my day off that I was going to go and do it and was absolutely n- not in the cards for me I'd be right. right what I want to do is sit about and do nothing uh, I'm, I'm chilling out like uh, I'm working all week surely I can have a day where yeah. I just sit about and I do nothing and see now that that is just the worst day for me is, is like the idea of sitting about and do nothing like I like I'll always do something and what's really sort of surprising to me is I've got more energy, which is kind of counterintuitive. You mm-hmm. think if you're tired, gone and seeing your mates, gone and see your family, you're like, oh, for Aye. fuck's sake, man, do I really need to do this in my day off? I work five days a week, I've got two days off. Surely I don't need to go go and see my family both my days off, but then if you do that, change your mindset around it and be like, no. And obviously you need to go and see your mm-hmm. sister and your mom and your nephew, Aye. otherwise you'll fucking lose them, do you, you know what I mean? But actually I've got more energy for all of these different yeah. things. It's like the mere day, the mere energy I've got for things. And I think that's definitely like something, one, of, like I was saying earlier on, like what is a sign? One of the signs is, is if you really enjoy disconnecting for everything and having nothing mm-hmm. bother you, even for like a full 24 hours, I'd say like, mm, maybe you need to have a think about Aye. Like spend your energy some way because you've got, if you're eating an appropriate amount of food, let's just say, You've got all the same energy that you spend any other day of the week in that day, and then that energy will just turn around on you and just end up getting into your fucking head. Mm -hmm. You're just rattling about, worrying about work. I don't want to go back to work tomorrow. I'm dreading this, I'm dreading that. And like, go and fucking spend that energy. I actually just sitting and thinking about shit. Even if you're watching something on Netflix, you're half watching it. Mm -hmm. And again, that's my idea of a nightmare, just sitting watching. Because you've been watching the telly and flicking through your phone at the same time. So I'm the same as you. If I've got a day off, I need to be doing something. And again, see you visiting family and stuff like that. That's something that fills your soul with joy. Mm-hmm. You might not know it, but it feeds your, you need to feed your soul. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And connecting with people is one of the ways to feed your soul, as well as doing other things like eating properly, getting a good night's sleep, being physically active. Mm-hmm. All these things just contribute to wellness. Mm-hmm. They all contribute. And even yeah. if you need to force yourself sometimes, 
you always leave feeling I'm glad I went there. You yeah. always feel better for doing it. Man. I always will, man. I think wellness is a good word to use because I think I think it's the language we use is quite important because happiness isn't something I don't think we should all be chasing, man. Because happiness is like the high you get. And mm-hmm. to expect a high constantly is just, do I mean, it'd be. I, I'd, I'd a, s- held a, a, a sort of different take on that that joy is like the high that you get, but happiness should be constant. You should be always happy. You should be always happy with the choices that you've made, or you, you shouldn't have regrets. And happiness is the things that happen sort of every, all day, every day. You should be happy, but then they, they, things that you're talking about like the highs that's joy and I think that that's where we end up where your every day's mundane and then you're like chasing happiness whereas you should expect to be happy like if you wake up in the morning and you're not happy with what's coming that day yeah see for but, me I think the word I would use is contentment we need sadness and we need happiness uh, to appreciate both yeah. and contentment is not a bad thing mm-hmm. being content is almost a, a level down for happiness mm-hmm. and if you wake up like that good mm-hmm. that's contentment for me and if you can find a wee bit of see you see uh, a wee boy helping an old woman across the road that's a wee bit of joy for you it's like oh this is nice that made me happy seeing that exactly. or somebody, says, or somebody <clears throat> says good morning to you that makes you happy mm-hmm. but for me the language I would use again it's funny how we're having this conversation about what language we would use Contentment's the one for me because mm-hmm. there's no better feeling than being content. Mm-hmm. If I, I like can have that on a daily basis, then yeah. Aye, <laughs> and if I get joy and happiness, I'll put your arm for it. Through the discussions and the, uh, the research and the literature, all sort of backs it up. Through the discussions we've had with guys, what, what brings them to a place of contentment in their life is having purpose and mm-hmm. meaning. Mm-hmm. And for a lot of guys, they've not had any purpose or meaning, or their meaning has been the fighter of the family or mm-hmm. the junkie of the family or mm-hmm. whatever, a negative. Yeah. But to have a positive meaning in their life where they're, they're given something. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, that's in our groups, guys come with baggage and then it's like a light bulb moment when they go, so I can use my baggage to help our cousins. Yeah, <laughs> well, aye, fuck, I've got meaning and purpose. I'm, I'm, I help people now, that's uh-huh. my purpose. And if that's only one layer of purpose. And we help guys sort of build with data spoke thing, don't we? It's mm-hmm. like a bike, a bike wheel. You need spokes to support that wheel. Yeah, yeah. The more mm-hmm. spokes you've got in your life, the more, do you know what I mean, stable you're going mm-hmm. to be. So to come into a Sunday talking groups, one spoke, having purpose and knowing that you're this, you're, you're support yep. people is another spoke. And then, do you know what? Go and find as many spokes, positive, mm-hmm. meaningful mm-hmm. things in your life to do. And I think that brings us to a place of contentment yeah. where we know that we are useful in a, in a positive way, regardless of how big or small that is. Mm-hmm. Um, Aye, I think that's what... I agree with that. I think purpose is something that I definitely find a level of stability in. Um, in recent years, it's been through my work. In the last year or so, it's been through, obviously, things like this. Mm-hmm. Um, and it is about meaning. I mean, I think we we'll live, particularly in Glasgow, where we've seen like the deindustrialization of like, the wider area, shipbuilding gone, you know, all the other various industries gone, and there's a lot of people out there who have lost purpose as a result. And I mean, this is over a 20, 30 year period. I'm not talking about overnight or anything like that, but you know, that sense of self that people get for employment and for, you know, employment that was linked to a part of our national identity in a lot of cases mm-hmm. as well. Yeah. You know, a level of pride that they yeah. took being this, you know, flagship industry, whether it be the railway, whether it be the shipyards, whether it be, you know, Lanarkshire or whatever. And like, we're not taught how to like, address that loss of purpose when it happens and we're no really like encouraged to go chasing it out as, as a younger person mm-hmm. you know what i mean like, but it is something that definitely definitely has a, a a massive driving force for me i'm a bit more reluctant to you know i'm quite happy sometimes to have a day where i disconnect with everything because you know that's just my process you know what i mean but at the same time um i purpose is something that balance, we all need like, i don't i would never I suppose I'd never say to somebody, if you like a day off, <laughs> do you know what I mean? You're not, <laughs> it's nothing wrong, with you. It's nothing wrong with you, but if you constantly do that, if that's all you do, yeah. like, that was, I suppose, to clear that up was, when I'm thinking back, that was all I wanted to do. My idea of day, day nothing was like bliss. Yeah. yeah. And just constantly just, I don't want to do it. And I had to uh, force myself to yeah. do everything, do you know mm. what I mean? So, um, I am not saying if you enjoy a day off and oh, you like to turn your phone <laughs> no, off, there's something wrong with you, but aye. I think if that's what you're constantly doing. We've had reports this week about um, like record high drug deaths 
in yep. Scotland, even though, I mean, I think the reporting actually started in 1998. So I would, I, I remember back to the late 80s, early 90s, oh, and there was like a zombie nation out there. Mm-hmm. Like, but the generation just before me are people, I, I mean, I, I said this in, to somebody the other day that I can name, I stayed in Carntine. Carntine's not a big scheme in comparison to like Sir John Chapel, mm-hmm. Easter House, like, it was quite a small scheme and I can think about 10 people that were maybe about 5 to 10 year older than me that all died through heroin yeah. so I think I don't think we're at a record high I think just because the reporting started in 98 I think just slightly before that we'd yeah. have probably seen it but mm-hmm. I, do you think that there's comparisons like w- why we're seeing like record homelessness amounts uh, record mental health record suicide record drug deaths do you think this is all just part of the one big picture that we kind of need to get in at the grassroots level to try and sort of combat? Do you think they're, they're like related? Or? I think, I think uh, my personal one perspective is that they're, it's all interrelated. Mm-hmm. My experience of working in the homelessness sort of um, field shows that you can't just give somebody a house to, to stop them being homeless. Mm-hmm. You need the, the social, you need the emotional, you need the, the support networks there. You need a whole host of different things. Um, so when we talk about mental health, it's the exact same. It's not about getting somebody a tablet, it's not about yep. getting somebody mm-hmm. these things, it's about look at them, you used the word holistic, and, and gain them a bit of control and saying, what do you need? These are the suggestions, what do you need? I, I honestly think it's about having a shit hot menu of options for people mm-hmm. and letting them pick what works for them because we are different. Some people like to go, right, I'm heading out of the hills with a tent for a fortnight, mm-hmm. I'll be back and I'll be feeling refreshed 100%. Yeah. Some people go, no, I need to get my head busy in a project, do you know what I mean, mm-hmm. to, to keep me going. Yeah, people that are different. Like, aye. We were talking to somebody, f- um, I'll no name him actually because he deliberately didn't say it in the podcast, but he went to Peru and did like a shaming experience to deal yeah. with his childhood trauma. Mm-hmm. Now, that's fantastic. And I was like, fuck man, I'd do that. That'd be amazing. Going to South America, that, what yeah. an experience that would be. But that's the length of which people are having to go. Uh, yeah. And like you're saying is, like you were saying earlier with the plaster, SSRIs, like anti-anxiety medications, these are all just band-aids. Like yeah. they should be used. I think this is where we're missing in the education. If you need it, take it. No stigma. Yep. If you need that medication, it will save your fucking life. It's yep. been proven. Yep. It will save your life, yep. right? But there is something else sitting underneath that that is causing you right. having to go on these tablets. It's exactly. like if you had a fucking broken arm and you didn't go and get it casted up, but instead you just went and you spent the rest of your life taking opioid painkillers to yep. deal with the pain. See, if you have to take this medication, you need there needs to be other services that allows people to explore why they ended up at the point where they need to numb themselves with drugs to get through life, do you know what I mean? I heard something recently, it was about GPs talking to people coming to saying, I'm not feeling great. Yeah. And there was something like, rather than ask them, what's wrong with you? Ask them what happened to you. And that way you can maybe get to the root. So like you're saying that in the presence, they are proven to work. But so is a good night's sleep. Yep. Mm -hmm. So is going out and having pals. Mm -hmm. That's proven to work as well. Probably more effective, actually, than antidepressants. Uh, But antidepressants are proven to work, obviously. Uh, There's a thing called the Hamilton Scale, and that's how they measure it. Uh, And a good night's sleep, a thousand of people's research, works better. Oh, absolutely. It gives you a higher rating on the Hamilton Scale. Uh And I'm not a a GP, so don't (laughs) stop taking antidepressants. Yeah. But, like you're saying, there's a thing about social prescribing as well. Why are we not saying to people, go play a game of football? Go do a bit of gardening with this group, go do this, go do that. Mm. Why is it always just the pills, man? And uh, that can be addictive as well, and that can make people sometimes feel worse. Mm-hmm. It can make people feel tired all the time. Definitely. And that's, like you're saying, it's like putting a bandage in a. I mean, don't get me wrong, I've, I've, I, I'm currently medicated because um, I have a you know genuine chemical imbalance that when it peaks, I like need it, I need to be stable. Um, but as I say, I'm, I'm also maybe six, eight months at a time, and then I'll, I'll sort of wean down. But sleep, mindfulness, meditation, gratefulness, all these other things that we've discovered and explored um, are definitely something I'd prefer to use. Yep. Um, and I've had like, you know, two or three year periods where I've been completely unmedicated as a result of these other techniques. So I can get what you're saying, that mm-hmm. there is a number of really easy, really quick to access mm-hmm. legitimate means to mm-hmm. man- manage yourself with the, yeah. the, the, the drugs but for me there is also like an actual need for the stability that can come along with them from time to time as well yeah, so definitely. again I wouldn't I wouldn't say you know 
don't ever, but I would say it's again, it's about what works for you. That's, That's right, you know what I mean? absolutely. Yeah. I think I think it's a society as well. Getting a pill is just it's we're used to it. People used think to, that's going to that's going to solve it, and they don't realise that it's still you know when I when I'm medicated, I don't stop meditating. Mm-hmm. I don't stop mm-hmm. making yep. sure I get eight hours sleep. I don't stop doing right. all these other things. Yep. I do these things as well as exactly. take my medication. Um, but because there's such a maybe it's a stigma, maybe it's that people's attitudes haven't quite caught up yet, but or they're not educated well enough. It's that they go to the GP, the GP gives them the pill, and they go, "Cool, okay. I'll, I'm fine now." Yeah. You're like, eh, it's, it's a bit more complicated than Aye. that. You know what I mean? Like, yep. you still need yep. to, as you say, address that. Whatever yep. that underlying issue that's driving that needs to be addressed yep. at some point, or else you're just going to go around in circles. You see, that you're saying earlier about the rise in homelessness and uh, drugs and stuff. Actually, you're saying it's so interlinked. It absolutely is all interlinked. It's a society thing. Mm-hmm. Uh, this it's just fashionable new to be a rattling gear and I out. Mm-hmm. I've seen it in like, Christians. Aye. Get it, Christians, man. I'm like, then no, that's a new thing for me. Right. <laughs> and that's pretty mental. And then, in the back, and again, to keep up with the Joneses kind of stuff. The group yeah. you're in, you might be kind of doing the same thing as that group you're in. And unfortunately, for all, especially young men and women, is taking drugs yeah. at any opportunity. Again, it's, it comes down to that everything's at your fingertips now. Like, it, it would be. Absolutely. I mean, when I was 18, 17, let's just say, mm. it would have been, it was hard enough for me to go and get a bottle of Bucky mm-hmm. and you'd have to stone it in the piss and rain hoping that somebody would go into the off-sales for you to get it. <clears throat> in comparison to now where they can jump on Snapchat or Instagram and have a grammar prop or whatever uh, they're, 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 they're smarting, yeah, like that, delivered yeah. to their house. But again, it's the education I say to people, I, these things are out there. Like, I think that's part of what the problem that we have in society is we ignore it. It's almost like we don't want, don't want to, it, especially with kids. Like you see this thing, and this is a wee bit unrelated. Where you've got fucking people out there saying that by telling kids that there are lesbian, like two single parent families, like well, there's two women, that will mean that they're they'll turn gay. Aye. No, it won't. They'll tell you what will if somebody is maybe even thinking, hey, wait a minute, maybe I'm gay, and then you're you're telling them to suppress that, mm-hmm. then that. Yeah, will just cause all sorts of fucking turmoil in that I person's do. mind. Like, Absolutely. So we need to acknowledge that everything is out there at their fingertips. Like, you can get anything on demand at any point in time, pretty much nowadays. Yeah. And that it is up to you to decide whether or no you want to engage with that. Yeah. But there's nothing really that wrong with it. Do you know what I mean? You don't you shouldn't stigmatize people and that's just there's a lot of this sort of just say no. Mm-hmm. Like the, when the uh, wokey was. Uh, talking about yeah, did a lot decriminalisation of drugs and how drug deaths and this big discussion that he was having during the week. The amount of guys that were in there saying, I came for postal and I just said no. So everybody should just do that. Exactly. But well done, mate. Uh, like, you had the strength. You. Uh, you had the strength. And yeah. maybe you had like a good mom and dad that were like, listen, you shouldn't really do that. And that, uh, that's fantastic for you, mate. Yeah. But no, everybody right. has that same experience just because you came for postal. <laughs> I know. Do you know what I mean? Like, I, I, I look back now and I've said this multiple times in this podcast. I, I've got this one guy that I always refer to and he tried to bully me at school and luckily I was bigger so mm-hmm. I could just kind of just deal with it and without having to really like fight with the guy but I hated this guy I fucking hated this guy's guts and I see this guy begging now on mm-hmm. Sucky Hall Street and the first time I seen him I was pure ha ha fuck you Aye. but see as I've started I went through this journey with Matt yep. and we're doing these podcasts yep. I'm like fuck man that poor guy, and then I think back and remember that guy's mom was a junkie. Aye. What kind of life did that guy That's have, right. man? That's it's nothing to do with him. He's not a bad guy. He was a he was a shit to me, but mm. that's because maybe he's seen something in me that he's been jealous of or yep, whatever. Exactly. It's his experience and his life that has pushed him to be like that. And that I, I'm just coming to that sort of conclusion for myself yeah. that it's everybody's life experiences and all the shit times that you go through as a kid will just rule your behaviour. And there was something the light bulb went off in my head a couple of years ago and you mentioned it earlier on. You've got a choice. See, just because you're emotional or something triggers you, like you're a trigger, you don't need to act. Mm-hmm. You can literally go, I'm not going to do that. Yep. You don't need to mm-hmm. explode. You can remove yourself. Right? Yep. And that was a big, big turning point for me when I was like, all oh, right, okay, so I don't need to live in my own emotions yep. and my own self-importance. Uh, you can and control how react. you feel. It doesn't yeah. always have uh-huh. to be the other way about. 
Like you don't have to be a slave to your emotions. You can actually take control. Uh, Accepting the things that cannot change and have the courage to change the things that that you can. Yep, absolutely. well, I've seen you dabble in the mental health stuff, and we're, I'm relatively new to this. I'm not a mental mm-hmm. health prof- I'm just a, a guy for the drum. But seeing you put your feet in the puddle a wee bit, you start to be more aware of people around you, and you start to look at them differently. You do. And I've even looked at my dad differently. Mm-hmm. Uh, in the past, with some of these struggles, and I'm like, fuck, he must have been here for a cut of time then. Yep. Must have been. And uh, it sometimes takes you to dabble in it a wee bit to recognise other people's struggles. And like you've just highlighted there, that guy who's big on the street now, you can almost have. You probably had resentment for that guy for years. Yep. But now you can <clears throat> sympathise or feel sorry for him mm-hmm. to a degree. It's empathy, aren't it? It's yeah. something that we're missing in wider society and politics and economics and everything that isn't just human on human contact yep. is compassion and empathy. Aye. Like, You're right, because if, if that existed, there wouldn't be people with any food in their houses in our communities. There wouldn't be people with, you know what I mean, um, killing themselves at the rate that they are. There mm-hmm. wouldn't be people that are struggling to the point where mm-hmm. they, 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 they hate themselves and don't want to be on the planet anymore. Mm-hmm. There wouldn't be people walking about that feel totally disconnected and they're causing mayhem around the, the schemes because yeah. they don't like themselves. Absolutely. Uh, absolutely empathy. And they, we've got services that are at bursting point, arguably, um, but there, there is nothing... There, there, there's not many options out there for people who have been to the doctor, mm-hmm. have been to see the social worker uh-huh. or whoever it is, and they're on a waiting list. Part, of, it's, part it's, of the issue I feel, and as we come to like sort of like wrapping up, is that there's too much finger pointing. Like I, I think of this. Like I think that what you are doing is fantastic. Yep. But you shouldn't have to do it. <laughs> do you know what I mean? Why are we relying on charity Aye. when we're the fucking fourth richest nation in the fucking planet yeah, and we've true. got people? Well, we need to actually, like you're saying, I'm not a professional, I'm just a normal guy that's, this has helped me, so I want to go and help it with others. Why do we not have the services to make these things, that, like, so that you don't have to spend your Saturday doing that? Sweet. You can go and spend it with your wings, you can Aye. go and spend it playing football and doing all the things that you love. Why do we need to have to come together like this when we've got all the money that we need to support it? We've got all the education. Why, we, why is it still the same shite? fucking maths and English that I get taught 25, 20 years ago yeah. getting taught the day when Aye. it's actually no need for it no, no need for it at all like we should be teaching people actual practical skills how to fucking open a bank account how Aye. to do all these things but people just get they, we're, we're creating workers and don't create That's human true. beings yes. like, yeah. and I think that this is where we're at this sort of crossroads where we've felt it and unfortunately we are the sort of lost generation to it mm-hmm. but we're doing everything we can to get it back but I think like the the message of like this sort of podcast is we need to talk to like teenagers and stuff mm-hmm. because there's so many guys are becoming these weird sort of like subsections of society like Sweet. incels and it's just like black mirror in real life yeah. it? and I think our generation is the perfect generation we've had the best of both worlds I think yeah we had it pre phones we had it we're climbing trees and jumping on buses to go in the corner and yep. the We've just we've had the best of both, and we've kind of slowly charm dolls and breaking windows. Aye, <laughs> <laughs> just it's walking fences, man. We never see a way of walking the fences. Aye, just then that are playing card bear. We've we kind of grew up in an era where you'd shout, your mum's shouting, you come home, Aye. Mm-hmm. or get your dinner. That doesn't Definitely. happen now, and so we we are the perfect position to say to young team, look, man, you're missing out so much, and we can give them examples why, and I think we need to use that experience to mm-hmm. really change things. And I'll certainly be doing that. Do that in my day to day job as well yeah uh, I think as well and, and just as, to sort of chime in on the, the sort of wrap up process like we're obviously kind of pushing well I think we're we're over the year mark according to whatever um, social media or whatever the post was um, <clears throat> and like when we started out the, like the Rebel City was intended as like a sort of Glasgow thing a reference to Glasgow like as we go further down the journey we meet guys like yourselves like, like I think your groups and the work that you use day is kind of took all that for me where this rebel city is now the notion of people like yourself who see these gaps in services and see these gaps in what people need and actually like step up and actually like rebel against that yeah. lack of empathy that lack of connection that lack of community and um i just think it's you know i want to thank you for your work and, mm-hmm. and i really appreciate you coming in man no mm-hmm. we appreciate you having us on we appreciate Definitely. you saying that uh, We'll just we keep, keep we can we love it, don't we? Aye. We get a buzz yep. at it. Uh, we could be sitting on the couch then just like watching Netflix, stuff, but we love doing what we do. Everyone is love it. We've got guys uh, who have got who are covering addicts, 
who are just buzzing after helping people. Mm-hmm. And see, so seeing them, you, you feed off that, you feed off that energy. And the, fi- the five boys, man, we all feed off each other. We all talk to you, we're a support network for each other. But when you can offer it out to a wider, and again, the ripple just keeps growing, honestly. Mm-hmm. It really is amazing, man. It's a big family. Um, and every time somebody new comes in, it's just a smothered way sort of support. And, right. you know I mean? it's, yep. uh, it's and again, as the group grows, the lived experiences grow. Yep. That's and right. when you can talk to somebody who's been through what you're going through, man, that's so much better than a doctor buying a book saying, right, oh, try this. Absolutely. See somebody saying, I know how you feel. That is massive, man. That is that's something else. Ah, you're not mm-hmm. alone. Exactly. You're not alone. You're not mentally isolated yep. or socially. Yeah, you've got some. You've got a brother. So I just tell people where they can find you. Then, um, just I mean, but you, you've got the podcast. You've got multiple things. So if somebody's wanting to reach out, or well, where can they find you? Aye. So if you want to get us on Twitter, we're at Men Scotland. That's our Twitter handle. Facebook, just type in Men Matter Scotland. Get us on there. We're on SoundCloud, YouTube for our podcast, and we've got a Spotify playlist just with some tunes that are motivational, relaxing, and just some just collecting me tunes. Outstanding. Amazing. So, I thanks very much for coming, man. Really thanks appreciate it. Thank you both very much. Indeed. That was brilliant. Yeah, Cheers, guys. fun. Yeah.